Hi, what I'd like to do today is to revisit the incline that I did a video on oh, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, you may recall that the, the incline was designed in Corel Draw and for the most part uh, cut out and, and built on my laser cutter. As far as the controls for the motor, we used a very small uh, gearhead motor like this. I needed a way for the, uh, the motor to be turned on so that the cars would go up and down like this. When one of them reached the top, it had to stop, pause for a period of time, then reverse. Uh, a very simple uh, application. And what I used initially was a very sophisticated auto reverse controller that I designed a few years ago. This is called the Bark, the Brilliant Auto Reverse Controller. And there are plans for this on my webpage. There's also information on this uh, on a video. It was really overkill for what I was trying to do. Uh, this is designed to do a very sophisticated point-to-point -point, uh, railroad layout with all sorts of station stops and sensors. What I added to this was simply a sensor that would tell if a car uh, reached the top of the track. You may recall that that uh, sensor was made up of a little U-shaped uh, piece of wood, three pieces of wood glued together, and on one end was a laser, a very small, I call it a micro laser, I suppose, that shot a beam across to a photo transistor on the other side, and here's an example of that. The laser is here, the photo transistor is here, and as long as that laser beam is not broken, the motor will continue to run. As soon as the beam gets broken by either one of the cars, the Arduino that controls everything is told, okay, stop, pause for a period of time, anywhere from a couple seconds up to a minute or more, then reverse and send the cars in the other direction. Um, it worked very well, but again, was overkill. So the first thing that I did after that was just take the parts that I needed from this uh, project. That was an Arduino Pro Mini and a small H-bridge. You may recall that an H-bridge is a double-pole, double-throw switch that's all electronic. With, that means that it can control whether a motor spins clockwise or counterclockwise. It also has the ability to control the speed of the motor. Well, that's exactly what we need. We need to control the speed of the motor so that we can adjust the speed of the inclines. And when one of them gets to the top, we need to be able to reverse it. This was kind of a proof of concept. Again, H-Bridge, Arduino, my two potentiometers, and the laser sensor that goes at the top. Once I got it working, got the software uh, designed, and I will talk about more about the software in a minute, very simple. I took the board uh, from, let me grab this one here, took the board from the, the Bark, the auto reverse controller, and I wired up a more permanent version. Again, here's the Arduino, the H-Bridge, the two pots, and this connection here goes to the laser sensor. This one worked, okay, next step, put that aside, what I wanted to do next was to design a separate circuit board that was just designed for the incline. And again, Arduino, H-Bridge, two potentiometers. The other addition to this was a little uh, power supply. You're going to put 12 volts into this board. As you well know, 12 volts will blow out a, an Arduino if you connect it directly. So there's a 7805 voltage regulator here in a capacitor to give you five volts for the Arduino and five volts for the uh, logic part of the H-bridge. The sensor connects over here. Uh, this board worked really well. I had a couple of minor issues with it, some mistakes that I made in the design, so I redesigned it, sent it off for fabrication, and wound up with this one. I had this guy here done in red just so I could easily distinguish it from the, uh, the green board that I was working with. And the controller is right here, and what I've done I've connected it up to a bigger motor so that you can see better. Uh, hopefully if I set that right there, that'll work. Here's my sensor with the laser and the uh, photo transistor. Let me pull 12 volts off of a wire under the bench. I'll connect that, and with a little bit of luck, you can see that this is rotating. Happens to be going clockwise right now, at least from the viewpoint that I have. And if I break the laser beam, it stops and immediately reverses. Now the reason it's immediate is I have the time set way too low. Let me turn the time up a little bit. Couple of second pause, clockwise. Couple of second pause, counterclockwise. The thing that's remarkable 
obviously I'm breaking that with my finger. Watch what happens if I just flick my finger through that laser beam as quickly as I can. That was enough for it to sense it. So if you have some other project that needs a real high speed detection ability, let's say something was going very quickly up there, this works really, really well. What I'd like to do now is show you the software that I used uh, to make this happen and explain the routines that are in there. Uh, you may be surprised at how little it takes uh, to get this thing operating. Be right back on the computer. I'd like to take a few minutes to look at the, uh, the Arduino code that makes it all happen. Uh, let's take a look at each section individually. This first part pretty much defines variables. Uh, you'll see that the delay time potentiometer is connected to pin A2, A2 again being an analog pin. The uh, car speed potentiometer is connected to analog pin 1. Then there are two variables that will store that uh, number once it's been read. Uh, the laser is on pin 3, and this will store the laser value. The laser is either going to be 1 or 0. 1 if the laser beam is not broken, 0 if it is broken. Here's an important variable, the direction, whether the car is going up or down. Uh, it's either a zero or a one. There's an acceleration deceleration rate that uh, determines how quickly the car stops when it hits the laser beam. Uh, these are four important variables right here. There are two motor direction variables. These pins connect directly to the H bridge, pin six and pin seven. If pin six is high and pin seven is low, it goes in one direction. If pin six is low and pin seven is high, it goes the other direction. There's also an enable pin that has to be pulled high for it to work at all. And finally, pin 9 is a PWM pin, and that connects to the PWM uh, speed control pin on the H-bridge. Okay, once we have that done, there's a setup routine. The setup routine, the first thing it does is it defines all of those pins we just talked about as either inputs or outputs. You'll see that uh, four of them are outputs. The laser is the only input. I've got some serial debugging in here. I'll show you that in a minute. And these serial commands simply allow you to look at uh, some information on the serial terminal. I set the enable pin to high, which turns it on. I read the car speed value, set the motor, uh, motor number one to low and, high, and number two to high. That'll send it in one particular direction. Then I go to a subroutine called accelerate, which sends a, uh, a PWM value, actually a series of them, to the motor to get it going. So this whole thing here initializes the variables and starts the motor and starts the, uh, the incline moving. Now the next part is the loop, and we'll highlight that. This part is uh, executed over and over and over again. It does two analog reads at the beginning. That reads the two potentiometers. And when you read the potentiometers, it's a 10-bit value it returns. It gives you a number between 0 and 1,023. Well, you'll see that the, uh, the car speed value is being divided by 4 right here. That's because the PWM value that you send to the motor can only go from 0 to 255. So 1,023 divided by 4 gives you the 0 to 255. This line here starts the, uh, or sets the speed of the, uh, the incline motor. This one, uh, again, we'll skip the serials for a minute. I'll show you those uh, once we're done going through this. It reads the laser value, and it puts the value either a 0 or 1 into laser value. And here's some important stuff here. If laser value is a 0, in other words, it's been broken, the first thing you want to do is decelerate, which is a routine that will stop the car from moving. Direction equals not direction. If direction is a zero, it becomes one. If it's a one, it becomes zero. If the direction is zero, set the motor direction, motor one low and motor two high. Otherwise, set them the opposite way. So if it's a zero, make it go in one direction, say clockwise. Otherwise, have it go counterclockwise. Then you're going to delay. You're going to pause for the delay time value. Again, that's up to about 1,000 times 10. That'll give you a delay time of about 10 seconds down to about, well, down to zero. And then go ahead and accelerate. Now, this is an important number I put in here. 
You also need to delay for a couple of seconds to allow the car to get away from the uh, laser beam. If you have this number here set to zero, and this number here is not in there, if that delay were not there, you'd never get the, uh, the incline away from the, uh, uh, the laser beam. It would just stall there. This, again, is some serial information we'll look at in a second. And here's the last two routines, the accelerate routine, which is just a, a for loop that sends uh, PWM values between zero and whatever the car top speed is to the uh, PWM of the motor. The decelerate does the opposite. It slows it down by taking and sending PWM, PWM values from the top speed down to zero and stops it. And I've got the uh, board connected up, and if we connect to the serial monitor, you'll see right now it's giving me numbers. It says the laser uh, status is a 1. The delay uh, number is 536. The speed number is 140. And if I fool with the potentiometers, watch what happens when I turn. This is the delay time potentiometer. You see it goes up to 1,023 and down to zero. So that's the delay time. Let's leave it at a couple seconds. And this one is the speed. And it goes from 255. And obviously, if you left it at zero, you would have no speed at all. It wouldn't run a bit. OK, let's break the laser beam. Let me hook a motor up here real quickly so you can hear what's going on, even though you can't see it. I think you can hear a motor running. I'll speed it up a little bit so it's a little noisier. And if I break the laser beam, I'm going to break it now. You see, it says decelerate, done decelerating, accelerate, and I'm done with that. And now it's back to running again. I'll break it again. Pausing, accelerating, I'm done with that. And again, I'm just waiting. That's it for the software. Very simple, hopefully very straightforward. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me an email, uh, info at trainelectronics.com or daviddaybaudner.com. Uh, there is a web page associated with this that has the code and the other information, some uh, sources for parts. I hope you have found something of value here that you can use in some of your projects. And if so, please leave a message and, uh, and let me know. Thank you.